today I got a Tesla Model Y that is making really loud radiator noises. So she's complaining about the air conditioning not working and I already heard it when I was pulling up. The radiator was just ripping. And so one of the things I did, I want to show you inside. I went to the service mode and I pulled it up. You probably can't even hear me. This thing's so loud right now. So let's try to go inside. Let's go ahead and hop in this car. All right, let's get in here where it's nice and nice and chill. So it's 66 in the car right now, which isn't terrible, but we want to get it colder, obviously. One of the things I did, I went to service mode and it says FC front A611 poor radiator heat rejection. This is the code that it's showing right now. All right, so to do this, if it's your first time, you're going to go to the car, then you go down to software, hold down model Y till it flashes and you're going to type in service. Enter. And so now that from this point, it shows that we have one alert. Turn our air back on. All right. So from here, we're going to check our alerts and it says poor radiator heat rejection. So another thing I wanted to try to do is go to thermal. See, there's our refrigerant running. Everything's good. Good. Coolant system. Everything's good. Yeah, so everything's going good there. A611 poor radiator heat rejection. Powertrain inlet coolant temperature is higher than nominal expected value under a similar operation may be limited. Your HVAC cabin, cooling, air conditioning, and powertrain performance may be limited. So let's go check that out. I hear it just ripping out here right now. Okay, so as I'm editing this, I realize you couldn't hear a single word I was saying because of how ridiculously loud that fan was ripping. So. As you can see here, all the leaves, cigarette butts, glass, sand, it had just all accumulated through that bottom lower fascia of the bumper all up on the radiator. And so that's where it was all sitting. So the next thing we gotta do is clean that out. So hopefully you've watched some of my other videos before and this isn't, this isn't new to you. We're going to take out the frunk and so all I do is take off this top panel and then take off the little clip on this side and then now I'm going to release the 10 millimeter bolt here, 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 and here and pull that frunk out. Must have been doing this last time. Alright, disconnect our frunk release. So one of the things I did here was release all these little clips. So there's a, there's a clip up here. So these clips right along here, 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 here. And then um, down here, you can basically squeeze these together on both sides. And now that gains us access to inside of here. So let me turn my little light on. Hopefully that gives you enough light. You're upside down right now so you can see all that dirt in there so i'm going to get a vacuum and get a lot of that that crap out of there and try to get it cleaned as best as possible there we go there you can see it if you look all the way through there's my legs so this is the air passing along that radiator so yeah we're going to clean all that crap out of there and get some better heat transfer all right next thing we're going to do is get disconnected 12 volts of battery so it quiets down a little bit. Right 
right now. It's just trying to keep the batteries cool. We don't need all that. And I'll disconnect the fireman's loop. So now we're just going to use the vacuum and suck all that dirt out of there. You want to be careful not to mess with the radiator fins. Be gentle. Uh, don't smash it in there. Just pull off the top. Okay, so we got the 12 volt disconnected. So we got the 12 volt disconnected. We got the high voltage disconnected. I did all that off camera because it was so hard because it was so ridiculously loud in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove this little cap. Get that down in there. And then now the next thing you're gonna wanna do is squeeze this little tab. So there's a little, this little piece right here, you're gonna squeeze it together and then let it fall in. And this is just that sensor. So you got that out of your way. This is the sensor. So now that that's out of the way, we're gonna disconnect the active louver system. So on that one is a red tab, pull it up. And then once that's disconnected, you're just gonna pull it out. All right, so I got most of the stuff vacuumed out. All I did was put this two by four, just anything to get a gap in there. Cleaned it all out, vacuumed everything out. And so now I'm just gonna take a, a hose and pressure wash it out of there. Rather than taking off the whole front bumper and doing all that, this will get her by and start cooling again. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is take this high pressure water hose spray it down on side of that radiator and just wash all that dirt out of there, all that dirt and debris out of there. So now I'm just using a regular garden hose with a jet nozzle on the end that has some pretty high pressure, but nothing too crazy that's not gonna push the fins over or anything like that. So basically all I did was wash it forward and I got a bunch of dirt all over my legs from the front and then washed it back out the top. And that ended up putting some dirt in the uh, front compartment there. So I just had to wash that out when I was all done. but. You're trying to basically spray kind of the top of the fins. You can't really get the water underneath of it. So you can see it washed a lot of the crap and debris up here. Oh, the, the air just kicked on for the cabin air. So yeah, all this crap came up through here. So I'm gonna put all this stuff back together. Obviously going from the other side is way better, uh, but for what you can get to the top, this is a lot easier to do and it gets a lot of that debris off. Put these four bolts back in. Put the emergency release front back on. Put this little pin in. That's it there. So that radiator fan hasn't even kicked on yet. All right, so I just finished up. This is the crap that I pulled out with my hands. Not much, but what I wanna see is all the crap that's in this vacuum. I just cleaned this vacuum out yesterday. So literally all that crap. All those cigarette butts, all that came out of that radiator. That's crazy. All right, so now the next thing I wanna do, I wanna check the cabin air filter. Uh, I'm betting that the cabin air filter is pretty dirty. So I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna pull the car back in and take a look at that now. So 
So the good thing is too, we have no active service alerts already. So it already cleared itself. So let me show you that. So like I was showing you guys before, you had one service, so service alerts, nothing. So that's good. No active alerts. That's one sign, good to go. So let's test the air, make sure it doesn't come back on. Pretty quiet, that's a good sound. I'm gonna let it just cool for a minute while I go on the other side. A little bit of debris is still left in there, but for the most part, this is still, this is really clean. As you can see down here, get some of these bigger, couple, some rocks. that is another rock but yeah airs airs on full crank right now and it's pretty quiet so let's check out the cabin air I'm gonna take off these pins so there's one pin right here one pin right here one pin right here All four. Turn the air off so we can talk. So I got all four of those pins out right now. And so now we get this down out of the way. There they are. And you don't have to completely disconnect it, just leave it down out of the way. And now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pull off the carpet on the inside. Just yank it off. All right, get all those clips out of the way. And so now I'm gonna get our five and a half millimeter. Okay, I got our socket and our ratchet. And I said five and a half, but I think it's actually a six. It is. Oh, so my fault, six. And all you're gonna do is take out the one bolt and hopefully you've either done this or you've watched my other video. Cause who knows, this cabin air filter might be good. I don't even know. So we're just gonna check it. It seems like it's got good airflow right now. It's a fairly easy thing to do. All right, and there we have it. Not terrible. We're gonna put new ones in anyways. It's pretty dirty, but not, not the, I've seen worse. So we'll use our real deal cabin air filters right here. So 110-681-00-alpha. And I'm not gonna do a, uh, a cleaning. Uh, there we go. Now you're not blinded by the light. Blinded by the light. So I'm not gonna do a evaporator coil cleaning because it didn't really like it was that dirty and there's no smells coming from the inside of the car. So basically all I'm, all I'm gonna do is slide these cabin air filters in. So yellow side towards the evaporator or white side towards the front of the car, slide it in, leave this little tab so that way you can grab onto it and pull it out. Let me slide this in there now. So there's two, there's one that goes in the bottom and then there was one that sits right on top. All right, so we got both of those cabin air filters in. So now I'm gonna put the cover back on. Got the cover on. Now we're gonna tighten up that six millimeter bolt. Okay, that's on. Crank the air on, make sure we don't have any funky noises. Not blowing air out of the places it's not supposed to be. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna put this cover back on. Just clips right back in place. And then the last thing we gotta do is put this cover back on here. Okay, got all the clips back on. If you have that same error over here, code VC front. A611 for radiator heat rejection. 
This is probably why. So you want to get up into your radiator and try to clean it out as best as you can. If it really needs it. If it's been a long time, it's got a lot of miles in the car, then you may have to take out that front fascia and actually clean it from the backside and blow the dirt out the front like you're supposed to. But this is a good way to get by if you just really need to get in there with the vacuum, clean it out, hose it out. They're still, it's not perfect, not clean, but well, I should take, I take that back. It's clean, it's just not perfect. A good little fix in probably less than an hour. And if you already know your cabin air filter, you don't even have to do that. Just that front radiator, clean it off, and you're good to go. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a good day. All right, so I've had this thing on max cooling for a while, and it is cold as an icebox in here. We're good to go. Look, I haven't got goosebumps. Just kidding. <laughs>